All right, sorry about that little sudden jump, guys. Um, I fast traveled to the Museum of History. Uh, There's just a lot of noise in the background, and I had to pause it for a second. Oh boy. Anyways, so let's just go see Moira, because I guess she is at the Museum of History. I didn't realize I had made it here. I guess I had seen her last time. Whoops. Shows how much I remember what's going on. But alas, that's. Oh, uh. Oh, it's just telling me to... It's, it just doesn't know how to make up its mind. I forgot about that. Oh, God. Okay, so... Moira, Moira, Moira. Where is she? There she is. Oh, I can't wait to hear how the repellent's working. Uh... Test the mole repellent extensively. Oh, excellent. Substantial field testing, precise reports, and such dedication. <laughs> What more could I ask for in a research assistant? So, how did my chemical repellent work? Safe and clean like a charm, I'll bet. Okay, so I can't remember if last episode if I did this quest or not, if I explained this or not the first time I played it, or anything. I, I could not remember for the life of me if I ever explained this or not, so if I did, uh, there'll be a sudden jump cut here. Where I just be cutting, uh, skipping ahead after I explain everything. But if I haven't, then let's explain how the Wasteland Survival Guide even works as a quest. So, of course, the Wasteland Survival Guide ha is probably one of the most complex quests in this game. Somehow. It just ends up being incredibly complex. Um, whenever you do one of the things for Mora, you have three ways of doing it. Lying about it, like cheating your way to the end by lying and stuff like that. Um, doing the basic uh, survival uh, requirements. Or doing the advanced ones. So there's basically, there's uh, failed, uh, succeeded, and then uh, and then mastered. Let's just put that as fail, succeed, and master, okay? So whenever you do one of the things for the warrior, you have to do one of the three stages. If you do enough of the high, if you do uh, too many fails, then the Wasteland Survival Guide gets very little bonuses by the end. If you do a lot of normals, then the Wasteland Survival Guide has a basic level of reward at the end. And if you do all the masters, then after that you get a really good reward at the end for doing the Wasteland Survival Guide. You have to do, I think, out of the nine things you have to do, I think you have to do like seven of them mastered or something like that to get the best reward. But don't quote me on that one. I'm not 100% sure. Or you have to at least do, like, I think it's just, it might be half of them. It might be five as well. I'm not sure. I'm going to try mastering as many as I can here because I can't remember how many I did. But after you do that, there's a second thing altogether that you have to go through. And it's answering her. It's telling her what you did. So there's multiple options depending on your stats, depending on the skills you have, depending on anything you do. So um, from what I understand, um, basically the stat that you use the most to answer her is the stat that will basically be upgraded in some sense of the word. If you do a lot of intelligence answers then you'll get like medicine and science skills up or medicine like energy weapons and science up something like that if you do a lot of charisma then you'll get speech and barter up and then if you do um, uh, if you do normal answers then your health will go up things like that so depending on the answers that you give her will depend on the reward you get at the end and it depends on which one you give the most if you just give a bunch of random different ones then I don't know how it defaults but um, if you give her, let's say, five normal answers, one intelligent, and then three charisma, you'll get the normal reward, which is extra health. So um, generally speaking, there's a good amount of common sense you can use to figure out which stat gives you what. If you do strength stat, then you're going to get melee weapons and explosives and stuff like that. If you do um, dexterity, then you get like sneaking and uh, small guns, things like that. So what I'm going to be doing, I don't know what I answered before. When I did this the second time, I, f I learned that I can do the um, the sarcastic and witty remarks at the end. And these ones here, the reward at the end is extra critical hit chance. I don't really care about getting the other bonuses simply because extra health isn't that important for me. And uh, since I already have so much defense and health anyways to begin with, and I have a lot of perks with the mods that I have that add even more health... But um, and any of the other ones, I don't really need because any of the stats is going to be upgrading. I'm going to put the level up to max anyway soon enough. I mean, I'm only level 20, 19 out of 30, and I'm already almost maxed out a good chunk of my stats. And I'm getting close to maxing out a lot of other ones. So I won't really need them. So the only thing I can really see that's going to be really worthwhile for me is the extra critical hit chance, which is what the Widow remarks give you. They give you a higher chance to get critical hits. 
So I'm just going to do the witty remarks from here on out. And there you go. So let's just do this. So it's like explosive whack-a-mole rat. Can I get it in bullet form for people? It's horrible. You are horrible. This thing is horrible. Everything's horrible. Oh. You're so sad. With that much testing. I guess it's beyond correction. Oh, go ahead and keep it. Maybe you can find a nicer use for it. But I doubt it. Oh, but for your trouble, uh, here, have the leftover chems from working on the repellent. I'm sure you can find some use for them. Alright, so let's do the last part. So let's, I'm pretty sure in the first part I gave her a bunch of normal answers, or maybe a few intelligence or charisma answers here and there. But, uh, but just this one here, plus the next four, I think I should have enough witty answers to beat out everything else. So, and the next three, I should say, should be four in total, and that should be more than what I, I've done before. So I think I've done, like, a mishmash of different things so i think the highest thing i got is like three normals right now so four witty remarks will beat anything else um none of that but i'm pretty sure i've mastered all the things i've done before this so yeah i i, I should be good i should definitely be good. i think I should, i'll actually have five witty remarks so the last part of this chapter is about mylers right yes knowing more about them can help people learn to avoid or even outsmart them so i picked up this observer device to study them in their natural habitat I need you to hide one in one of the spawning pods in their lairs. Um, thinking to my like lair, that pay had better be worth it. While you're working on that, I'll be following up on a lead I've got for a couple stealth boys. When you're done, they're yours. Done. And who knows? Maybe we'll learn something useful from the Meyer Lurks. Stealth boys are worth a lot of money. That's great. I recommend the nest at the Anchorage War Memorial. I knew a trader who talked about the Meyer Lurks down there. Just go inside and find one of their spawning pods, probably down near the water. Put this observer inside and get out quietly. And be sure not to kill any Meyer Lurks inside their nest. If you do, it could ruin the validity of the study. Alright, so yeah, we have to go to the Meyer Lurk nest and put an observer inside their nest so that we can study them. Uh, this quest here is actually really easy. This is actually one of, probably one of the easiest, if not the easiest part of the entire uh, Wasteland Survival Guide, just because it's a very, very easy way to just basically skip the entire thing. So let's just go here, and it's all the way down here. Since I went to Rivet City, though, um, I have an already, I already have an easy way to get there. So may, make sure you go to Rivet City a little bit beforehand. I don't know if I've had to go there before or not. I don't think so like for the wasteland survival guide you get forced to go to rivet city as well so eventually you'll get here anyways but i've already been here so very easy quick little i saw red there what's red all right let's go down also the world isn't exactly loading for me that's really weird i've never seen that before anyways though i should be why did it tell me to go over here then the hell? Tepid sewers. One moment. As you guys can tell, I'm not exact. I don't exact. Uh, graphics, please. The lighting is weird here. Um, give me a sec. The game says there's enemies nearby, but I don't see where they are, and it's really annoying because I want to fast travel. Uh, let me give me a second. I'm gonna see if I can auto load to the museum history. Uh, no, I cannot. Okay. Alright then, never mind. Also, the AIs are just kind of sitting here, and everything's weird. Everything's weird. Everything's messed up. Everything's wrong. Let's go to the front of Rivet City. So, yeah, um... I sometimes talk as if I know what I'm talking about, and I sometimes don't. I think there's a different mission that's near Rivet City that I'm thinking of. I think I know which one it is, but I think I might have already done it. Have I already done it? I can't remember for sure. I think it's, like, over here somewhere. Whoops, and then the quest marker telling me to go over here is what threw me off. So let's figure, I, I don't know why it told me to go to Rivet City. Like, it, that wasn't just me, right? It, it, it the, the thing clearly pointed all the way down to Rivet City, right? The quest marker signs in this game can be really, really, really weird. But anyways, it's actually right here. So Tempest Sewers is right here, and it's actually, I, that's, that's what confused me too. I remember a part of my head was like, something's wrong here, because I remembered it being very close to Tepid Sewers. And I wasn't wrong, it really is really close to Tepid Sewers. So since you've already based, probably gone to Tepid Sewers because of the repellent mission, you have an easy fast travel just to go over here. And you have the door to Memorial Server's entrance right here, which is locked. 
Usually the game expects you to go into the front entrance over here on the other side of the island and then go through an entire sewer system full of Mylars. It's really dangerous. If you come over here and you do a very easy lockpick, you're at the end of said sewer dungeon thing. So now there should be just a few Mylars lurking around, but nah, well, that was a really terrible pun I didn't even mean to make. But they should be very easy to avoid, and even if they do see you, it doesn't actually matter. As long as you... Oh, 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 oh. Come on, move out of the way. I mean, I guess there are other other places I can go to. There's another one over here. No, there isn't. Uh, I need a repair 95 or higher to get in here. That's, there must be something really good in there then, right? Well, the Mylar's walking away. I don't know why he heard me there. Sometimes the game likes to occasionally put you in caution for no reason. Put the observer observation device inside and then leave. So this mission has three ways. You can either pretend that you put the observation thing in there and then, you know, stuff goes wrong. Or I maybe you don't. Maybe you can't just lie your way out of this one. I know some of them you can, some of them you can't. But either way, you can still lie to her um, and get the failed version of this. You can do the normal, which is, um, oh, I'm down, door. You can do the normal, which is putting the observation device in there, and then immediately, uh, a a a while also killing one of the Mylers or more. And to get the master, you have to get in there, put the observation device, and not kill a single Myler. They can see you, but if they don't, if you don't kill one, you're fine. Um, thankfully, they have that really, really nice back door there, where especially with the Chinese stealth armor, you just, you're just guaranteed to get out, get through without getting spotted. And even then, not, there's, no, there's not always a Mylarg there, so sometimes you can just get in and have no Mylarg, just walk in, put it in, and leave. But uh, it's just really easy to... Um, it's really easy to just uh, get away with that mission there, to just easily skip it. So, since I didn't kill any Mylarg, I got the master... I, I mastered that part. I got the perfect. Now we go and see Moira again. Hey, you. We don't oh, we that's don't not Moira. Where's Moira? There's you. Well, hello again. Uh, can you print my things? I won't need the Chinese stealth armor for long soon because I'm at level 21. I'm probably gonna get the um, shadow, the shadow perk, and at that point, my character basically becomes impossible to see. Uh, so alien disintegrator. I don't have to repair weapons because I can just repair them. Um, with the alien epoxies I have. And uh, I don't know if I've already said this, but apparently you can go back to the DLC. I thought the alien epoxies were limited and like the alien power cells were limited and stuff like that. Or the, um, what are they called? Energy cells, is that what they're called? Uh, power modules, sorry. The power modules, you can get more by going back to the DLC area and occasionally the NPCs there, the little girl and uh, the guy will give you some DLC ammunition and stuff like that. So you can still um, repair your weapons and still get more ammo and stuff like that. Even if you um, used them all up before. Yeah, this place so is falling. Everywhere is falling apart. Do they have a leader? Some sort of king, or priests, or some sort of scaly community center? I'll just answer here. Um, but yeah, um, I like how she said, do they have a king? Well, they technically are Mylar kings. I'll bet most people would have just gone in there, guns blazing without half a thought. But not you. You're the best research assistant ever. Also one of the craziest people in the wasteland. That's not the point. But what do you think about them from your first hand observations of them? Uh they've got oh. I don't wanna lie though. If I lie, doesn't that mean that I get a worse ending? Oof. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if lying about that is bad or not. Let me check real quick. 
All right, so I just looked it up, and it looks like the snide part, this is considered the snide one, and it's considered giving me a bonus anyway. So I'm going to do it. Really? Are you kidding me? No, really, are you? Huh? Guess I'll have to wait and see what I get from the observer. <laughs> Some of these observations about their armor and camouflage gave me an idea for reinforced neutral colored headgear. Here, consider it thanks for not interfering with them. Oh, speaking of which, take these so you can continue to avoid them in the future. Yeah, so she gives you, from what I figured out, uh, the stealth points depends on your level. At level 1, you get 1. Level 4, you get 2. 7, you get 3. 14, you get 4. Sorry, 7, you get 3. I think 10 or 11, you get 4. 14, you get 5. And I think 16, you get 6. Something like that. Around those numbers. I'm not 100% sure. But I just, 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 just saw it. So that's why I can kind of remember the numbers off the top of my head, because I just, just, just saw it. But, um... Yeah, so this chapter done yet? But yeah, so at level of state 19, you'll get six, of definitely. We are. And I think I'm really capturing that snide wit of yours. So for <laughs> all your snippiness, I think it'll help with a book. Still, I can put up with plenty of your little jabs, as long as the research is good. And yes, <laughs> I like how you still get paid. Out. Here, nothing says loving like big boxes of ammunition, right? Now, on to the next chapter. It's fun and really, this is like one of the few chapters that just gives you rewards instead of giving you money. Like one of the few quests, I should say. It's kind of weird to think that like out of all the, of course Moira, the weird character is going to be giving you all the different unique rewards instead. Uh, let's start really researching the last chapter. The last chapter is a bit more esoteric. It's about the survival of humanity as a whole and how to rebuild society. Deep stuff, huh? Ain't Darius already made a video on this. You know how large settlements are formed, how to harness the old technology, and I'll need you to get ancient history from a nearby library. We're in the last stretch now, so let's finish it up strong. What's first? Oh boy. Well, I already have it available, and it's my least favorite one, so let's do researching local history. You know, sure, you'd be surprised how confused people get, even about important things. You have no idea, Moira. In this case, I'm talking about Rivet City. It's the most successful survivor settlement around, but no one here really knows how it started. Oh boy. Of course, that's why it's important to know how a place like that succeeded. So I need you to go there and do some researching. Uh, what's the value of the game of history? You mean, apart from making sure we don't repeat our tragic failures in the never-ending cavalcade of human pathos and suffering? Let's say... I like Mara. A big pile of mentats. I got a shipment of those in recently. Do a good job, and maybe the people of Rivet City will reward you too. Alright, sounds reasonable. I'll research Rivet City's history. Oh, now I can't wait for what you find out down there. And check around to make sure you're hearing the real deal. Okay. Uh, let me see what you have for sale. Do you have money? You do. Okay, so let me sell you some stuff. <gasps> You're one of the few characters that has almost enough for A321's plasma rifle. You have, like, um, stiff packs? You do. Oh, I finally got rid of it. Nice. Alright. Uh, I still have an alien blast. Oh, I have an alien blaster, right. Okay. Um, what else can I sell? I have the repellent that I don't need anymore. And I think that's everything, right? I'm pretty sure it's everything. Ooh, internal medicine. I should get. I should. I should read that. Dirty water. I have a lot of things I have to read. What the hell am I doing? Why am I not reading them? Uh, finance clipboard, carton of cigarettes, F claw hand, and well, Android components aren't gonna take any response. So there's no point in having and selling them. Uh, anything here that I don't need. Flame or fuel. I don't need flame or fuel. You cannot afford my flame or fuel. Give me back my flame or fuel. Here you go. Good All right. hunting. I have to go now. So thank you for the $1,000. I am going to immediately probably spend that on repairing armor later on. Welcome, visitor. I think that's all my cast is going to be used for now is just repairs. One of the few people who can afford the A1, A3, whatever uh, M gun. So anyways, we have Rivet City as a fast travel location if the game would just let me fast travel out of these areas. 
I get some places like dungeons because you don't want you to be able to just teleport out of a dungeon. But some areas like this, seriously, this should be a room that I can teleport out of. I know they just made it every interior ever just to make it easier on them, but come on, guys. Oh, boy. Alright, so River City, like River City, Megaton, things like that should have all been places that you should be able to just teleport out of, unless you're in one of the dangerous areas. It should have been just a simple switch of yes or no, and then they should have just... Or like even just have like a, when you're building an area, just have a tag like uh, save zone or not save zone, and then you can just fast travel based off that. I feel like that wouldn't be too difficult to program from the very minimum knowledge I have. Like just add one extra little value to every single area. That's either yes or no. And then while they're building the areas, you can go, okay, so is this a safe area or not a safe area? It's going to be a safe area. Okay, well then they can go ahead and tra fast travel, you know, stuff like that. So this quest here, we're supposed to figure out the history of Rivet City. And it's a pain in the ass to do because the game gives you zero to no in the in uh, direction to where you're supposed to go. And if you don't know Rivet City like the back of your hand... Then you're gonna get really easily lost in this massive maze of a city. This place here has so many like dead ends and little areas you never have to go to, and the specific characters you actually have to go see are surprisingly well hidden. Um, we've already met one, but there's another one I had no idea how to get to them for a long for the longest time, and it, it really pissed me off. But anyways, so as we go to Bannon. Welcome to Potomac Attire. I am Bannon, proprietor and city council member. I carry discriminating attire for discriminating customers. Uh, so I'm not good at the shop here. I just have a refinement. I'm here to do business with you. Straight to the point. I like that. And back away. And so now, uh, why are you guys living on this boat? Or could I ask you about the city's history? Why I practically set this whole place up. When I got here 12 years ago, it was just a handful of dead enders squatting in a rusted out rowboat. Now I'm on the council, and with my leadership, we're the strongest settlement in the wastes. Of course, a few of those dead enders still stick around, but who'd want to leave? Hasn't River City been around for longer than 12 years? Well, yes, but it was hardly any place of importance until I arrived on the scene. That's all ancient history now. No one would ever care about it. If you insist on wasting your time on that, you could try that bartending old crone down below, Belle Bonnie. Yeah, he he points. If you do that, you do get extra little information, knowing that he's not exactly telling the full truth. And there's a girl called Bonnie that you can go see. Uh, now the game starts telling you to leave to go tell a mortar that you already have the history, but that's just a good result. That's not a mastered result. What you want to do is go. If I'm correct, is it here? I can never remember where to go. For certain. Um. There's a certain staircase I'm looking for that leads up and down. I want to find that. Uh, that's Cantelli's oh, door? No, that's not what I'm looking at, right? That's definitely not what I'm looking for. Where's the stairway? It might not be here, actually. I think I might be going the wrong way. Uh, oh, no, here it is, right here. Okay, so no, I did go the right way. So you go into the staircase here, and you go straight down. And then you find the muddy rudder. This is where you're supposed to go. In the muddy rudder, there's what's her face. Hello, Belle Bonnie. I'm Belle Bonnie, and this is the muddy rudder. I'll tell you what I tell all the fresh meat. Don't start anything down here, or I'll have Brock kick your ass. So you can say this place is real dumb, and she gets mad at you. You can say nice place you have here, and she gets she gets surprised by you. And then I haven't even tried this one here. You must be drunk. Are you gonna order or what? It's kind of annoying. She's kind of a uh, not exactly the nicest person in the world. But um, have any stories about this place's history? History? What? Not enough shit around here already? You need to dig up more? Don't know if it ever had an official start. It's just been here forever, stuck in the river and full of assholes. So you could just do a speech check and try to get her to tell you. And if you do, you do get experience. So I'm gonna be doing that. And if you fail, well, she doesn't really care. But I see, I can do this. Nope. And she I failed. Sure, share a bag of get the hell out of my bar. First one's on the house. Now scram. And yeah, that's really annoying. I, I hate how you can like you, you like I, I don't like her. I'm just trying to talk to you, and you're getting all pissy with me. Calm down. But anyways, if you did talk to Bannon, 
then um, you didn't have to talk to Bennett first. You could just come down here and talk to her and try to get the speech check, but it's a really tough speech check. One of the reasons why, like I said, I'm nearly maxed out in my charisma. I know I have the helmet, and I think that might be reducing my like speech by two or whatever, but I've pretty much maxed out charisma and maxed out speech. Very, very close to it. And that was a 42% chance. This is why I don't like Fallout 3. Even if you max out your speech checks, you still get these really nasty speeches that are just purely coin flips. And it's not fun. If I max out my speech check and charisma, I want to be able to guarantee do my speech checks. That's why I invest the points in the first place. What's the point of investing into something if I'm still going to have to rely on luck later on anyways? I might as well just not invest and just keep re-rolling the dice until I succeed. You know? So, it's just really annoying. But... Whatever, let's put it aside for now and let's just talk to Balbani. I went to talk to Bannon, so now you have a second reason you can do it. If you ha tell her about uh, Bannon, or if you talk to some characters that give you like fake or not real results of the history, you can talk to her and tell her about it, huh. and she gets mad. Lying son of a bitch. He wasn't even born when I got here. Want to know this tub's history? Only person who really knows it is Pinkerton, and most think he's dead or gone. He's holed up in the other half of the ship, and you don't like visitors. He'll set you straight. All right. I'll be right here when you get thirsty. Now I can uncover Ridley's true history. So now, if you talk, you have to talk to her, even if you know where Pinkerton is and you've talked to him before and everything. You still have to talk to her and get the truth out of her first before you can. Oh hi. Before you're allowed to. Um, to talk to Pinkerton about it. You can't just go up to Pinkerton because it's it, it, it's this something that always baffled me about this mission is that you can literally go around and just ask random people about the history, but for some reason or another, if you go up to Pinkerton and you, you can go like, hey, maybe you know about River City history, he what you, you can't do that. You can't ask him. The game forces you to go through this. it's one of the few things that I feel like Fallout 3 did wrong sometimes is that it forced you through a very set linear, linear path. And you're thinking, yeah, but your character has no reason to think that Pinkerton might know the history. Sure, maybe not, but my character is still looking. My character's goal is still to find out about the history. So if you find somebody living within the boat, he could go, you know, maybe Pinkerton might not live with them, but he's still a guy living within the boat and go like, you know, maybe you know about the history. And if he goes like, whatever, no, I can maybe try speech checking going, are you sure? You know? And if that doesn't work, then at least, you know, like, um, then you can go see her and then come back and go, okay, and now I know for a fact that you know about this, tell me, right? Things like that. So I just feel like if your character's goal is to ask around for the history, why isn't he allowed to just ask anybody? You know, like, every NPC in this area should have, like, a thing, even if it's as simple as, like, oh, I don't really know, I just got here, you know? That, that simple thing, at least I'm still asking, right? But instead the game forces a very specific number of NPCs you have to talk to in a certain order to get the best ending, the best uh, order, the best result and it's really dumb in my opinion I feel it's really really dumb you sh if it's about like looking around to figure out the history of a city by asking around then I should be able to just look around and ask around you know I can't remember if I got every single trap in here I better have because we be worried otherwise but yeah I know so you cannot ask Pinkerton even though your character is looking for the history and is perfectly capable of going up to him and talking to him on his own and going hey maybe you know no, your character doesn't even think hey. about asking until you talk to somebody else. Stay sharp. They're everywhere. Alright, so you think you could perform a facial... No, no, no. Tell me about the sissy history. What? I have better things to do than yak about those backstabbers up topside. Now get going. The worst part is that the char my character doesn't even point out that, like, oh, she told me that you knew about the history. He, she just outright says, oh, can you just tell me about the history? Why couldn't she say that before? It always pissed me off. Because I knew Pinkerton knew the history. When I was doing this mission the first time. I knew Pinkerton knew the history. But I didn't know how to get him to tell me. And apparently I had to go talk to other people. Even though I could just walk up here and go, Hey, do you know the history of this thing? And he, he outright says it. He doesn't even pretend that he doesn't. He outright says, yeah, of course I know. But I'm not going to tell you. Then I can just, you know, ask him. Um, I hear you're the only one who knows the truth about River City's founding. Sounds like you've been poking around, all right. I'm surprised any of those reprobates even remember me. Maybe they still laugh about how they edged me out of the council back then. But you can set the record straight. 
and I mean, he just, he, he, it's just, it's just, I don't know, man. I really don't know. Senator Castray is exactly my goal. For that, you have to go all the way back to when remnants of the Naval Research Institute cleared the Meyer Lurks off this wreck about 40 years ago. We were looking for new lab space, and this bucket of bolts just happened to have a well-preserved science bay on it. Everything else just grew up around that lab once we got it up and running. The science team was led by one H. Pinkerton. Used to be in charge. How did that end up here? That lasted until about 18 years ago, when those ambitious backbiters like Lee and her little team showed up. She came in with her big purity project pipe dream, and my whole staff started working with her, those traitors. She even took my seat on the council. By then, I was glad to leave it behind. But hell, if I'm leaving the city, I made great. Uh, do you have any hard evidence of this? Of course I do. A good scientist always keeps track of their data. Here. They probably don't even remember, but I kept the records of that first council meeting. Take them, if it'll put them in their place. All right, so now we have the perfect uh, history. So yeah, River City started out as a safe haven that also had a lab that uh, scientists could use. And because scientists were able to uh, use it to do research and everything like that, and there's a science team, people started staying here to like help out, and then they grew around that. So that's how it, it actually started out as a science facility that grew into a city. And now everybody forgot it's... Oh! God damn it, you scared the living hell out of me, you son of a jerk of a... Oh my god. Oh. I completely tensed up for a moment there. Because I just suddenly got hit by something and I had no idea what it could have been. No! Bad! Bad! Bad Myler! Bad Myler! Bad, 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 bad. Okay, so, moving on.